There are 1.62 billion millennials who use social media in the world today, and this number is consistently growing. The market for our product is huge, and we will be the first ones to revolutionize the way that people connect in the broad social media spectrum. Being an innovative entrepreneur who makes a positive impact on the world is what you're striving to be. I want this just as bad as I can breathe. We want it so bad, and we're gonna get it. Our product is innovative and revolutionary. You will not regret investing in our company and becoming a part of our journey. All right, our fifth startup is Zap. It will be presented by Anthony Cresto, Camille Hussain, and Joseph Pisano. Uh, their team... <laughs> their team mentors are Mariano Portocarrero and Matt Powers. Take it away. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm Anthony. And I'm Camille. And we are Zap. Zap. Amir asked for a $300,000 investment for a 20% stake in our company. When coming to Fairfield, I had zero friends. I barely even knew my roommates. But when I went out on weekends, I met so many people. I just never had enough time to ask for social media account information or even their cell phone numbers. And I found that the process of connecting on social media could be complex and even at times awkward. It doesn't help that most users do not use their exact first and last name as their social media uh, profile name. Investors, I understand that you guys probably have a Facebook. And you probably have a LinkedIn, but you definitely have a phone and email. We, as millennials, have these. We operate on social media platforms ranging all the way from Instagram to Tinder. Zap is a mobile app that revolutionizes the process of connecting with one another. Connecting on social media should be as simple as taking a picture. Zap conveniently connects to your users through a simple scan of a QR code, simultaneously syncing them on the social media platforms of their choice. Each user who registers with Zap will have their own personalized QR code embedded with their prospective social media data. When one user scans another user's QR code, they will, they will be given the option of what social media platforms they would like to sync on. After all, it's what the user's comfortable with connecting on social media. These wireframes display the future interface of our mobile application. Once the user receives their unique QR code, they select which platforms they like to zap on. They confirm the zap, and voila, a success in page appears. To keep users consistently incentivized to use zap on a daily basis, we have come up with our incentive-based system, Volt. Volts are a virtual currency. Sent to three ways to attain votes. Every time you zap, you attain votes. Every time you share the app, the results in another download, you attain votes. And every time you complete the weekly survey, you attain votes. Now these votes add up to discounts, promotions at local or nationwide stores. To give you guys a sense of the size of the social media market, we did some digging, and we like our results. We now know that 90% of millennials, people from the age of 18 to 29, use some sort of social media networking platform. That's about 1.62 billion globally. The social media market is consistently growing, with 283 million new users in 2015, translating to a 17% growth rate. Out of these new users, about 29% are on their social media accounts several times a day. To put these numbers into perspective on your very own Fairfield University campus, we conducted a market survey of 100 Fairfield undergrads. We came to the conclusion that 90% use more than four social media platforms. 85% said that they use social media more than five times a day, and 75% said that they meet new people on social media one to three times a week. With the help of Critical Mix, we're able to create a much larger survey asking similar questions and receiving corresponding results, such as out of the users, 52% said that they add some, someone often on more than one social media platform. Although no one has directly replicated the use of the QR code like Zap does when connecting with people on social media, there are competitors that, that utilize the QR code in a different way when relating to social media. We understand that our marketing strategy will be essential for Zap's growth. We plan to implement a college campus ambassador program at the largest schools across the nation. After all, millennials connecting on social media every day are greatest and present on large college campuses. We'd also like to advertise on a popular college website such as Her Campus and Total Frat Move. As millennials, we use social media all the time. We understand the needs and wants of our consumers. We are the first to this market. With the Campus Ambassador Program being an integral part of our marketing strategy, our connections on large college campuses would be a huge asset. The investment will be broken down as the following. With $190,000, or 64%, being dedicated to our product development, we plan to build a prototype, a full-fledged app, as well as platform maintenance. Our marketing expenses will be 33% with administrative expenses at 3%. The business model for Zap will operate on three main revenue streams, data analytics, social media commission, as well as sponsorships and partnerships. In year three, Zap will become a cash flow positive business where our revenue per user exceeds our user acquisition costs. And in year five, we predict 90 million users tuning into $200 million of revenue. 
in years one and two, our maximum cash needs will be $300,000. We understand that the social media market is growing at an extremely fast pace, and technology is innovating quick as well. We as Zap understand that we will need to tailor and innovate to the needs of our consumers through implementing new technologies, such as location services, RFID, bump, slide, and tilt techno technologies. We are not married to the QR code. With the strong advisory board, with Matt Powers, former CTO of Applico, helping us with technology, and Mario Porto Carrero, an analyst at Wells Fargo, helping us with finance and strategy, we believe that the Zap team is well equipped to make this business successful and profitable. Simple, Simple easy, easy Zap. zap. I don't know about you, but that presentation made me feel so young, let me tell you. <laughs> Investors. <laughs> um, let, let, me, let me start off by at least qualifying some of this a bit that I don't use any of those social media platforms, and so email and phone is probably uh, uh, the closest. So, so I'm not sure I appreciate the problem you're solving. Can you, can you discuss that a little bit more? Like, what is that problem you're solving? <clears throat> so to put things in your perspective, when Anthony and I met when we first came to college. A lot of the things that we have in common now, we probably wouldn't have realized if it weren't for social media. A lot of the things we realize now, I only asked for his Instagram maybe the 10th or 15th time I met him, or maybe on Snapchat the next month after. I, didn't, I wish I could have had that process simplified into one scan of a QR code, because I would be able to realize and unlock the potential of our relationship as well as save me a lot of time. Also with our app, you're able to add someone on more than one platform, which typically you can't do with any other app, so we saw that. But isn't that a natural progression of how relationships develop as opposed to as soon as you meet somebody and then you link them in your entire life? If that, is, if that represents your entire life right or, now? Or you could have talked to him. You could have asked him. Oh. <laughs> no one talks anymore. Come on. Yeah. Well, as we said, the process of asking someone on social media could be awkward at times for whatever reason it may be. Uh, that's behavioral. I'm not sure. It's, it's different all around, but I think it, it genuinely is a problem as sometimes people's usernames aren't even their password, aren't even their user, aren't even their names on social media. So that could be tough as well. So do you think that any, I mean, how much thought on the demographics wise is it that, is this an age-based problem you're solving? So meaning after you enter the professional world and so forth, people are much more guarded with some of their social pieces, uh, as well as some of their personal aspects of life and, and family and so forth outside of. Is this, is this, was this considered in your business plan? Yeah, definitely. Um, at first, we definitely are targeting millennials as they are the greatest users of social media. But in the future, we do plan to implement uh, sort of a Zap business platform where people who want to sync on business can have that strictly Zap QR code tailored to their business needs. Mm -hmm. So example, if you and I want to connect on LinkedIn or I want to see your B card and what your role is, we can do that. But that's along in the future. The initial issue that we plan to solve is relating to millennials and how they connect on social media to make the process quicker, less awkward, and easier. Because okay. yeah. we're all in a rush at this age. <laughs> <laughs> to what? Just getting places. Well, uh, what, 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 really what are you rushing to? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll talk very Yeah, we can, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, what have you done? It sounds like you're going to, I'm going to zap and you're going to take my data and you're going to sell it to everybody. So hmm. I am very worried about privacy and security. What have you done related to getting advice on privacy and security? So we've talked to our mentor, Matt Powers, who has built many apps in the past. And it really is uh, more features built into your Zap profile, so you can only really share what you want to share. If you and I Zap, you don't have to share any of the social media that you don't want with me. And the only way for me to get your social media would be through that QR code scan originally. So you are protected more than you know when using Zap. So if I'm the government um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you have There's all a big of job. the social media, all of the social media platforms connected, um, you would be a, a target-rich environment, kind of like the Apple iPhone is now that the FBI can get into it. So would that make your potential customers more hesitant to use your product? I think there's definitely ways around it, like definitely social media and technology security has been a rising topic 
in just in the general realm of even mergers and acquisitions of numerous cloud security firms that have been acquired. So we could do the same thing if we wanted to really, if that we found that that was an issue, I'm sure there was a firm that can tailor to that interest of protecting our sure users and how they feel. So could you just expand on, you have 90 million users up there by 2020. Um, how, how do you get to, if you got 90 million users by 2020, then you're in fabulous shape, obviously. Uh, but how are you getting to that number? I think it's really about us having a really structured marketing program to really tailor to all the people who are using social media. So definitely by, we plan to go, um, I guess, school to school and the population at those schools will be in the millions and eventually in 2020 we plan to go international as people all over the world do use social media. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean the marketing strategy would be a huge part of that idea. Quick question guys, does, I'm gonna go lean over to this mic. Does your business plan require you to have any um, coordination or cooperation with the, uh, with the app providers, like a Facebook or be it a LinkedIn? I mean, do they have to have any involvement? And then as a follow-up question, suppose we zap, but I don't want you to see something. How do I unzap? How do I, how do I get you out of a certain portion of what I've done? Suppose by accident, I thought we were gonna, it was gonna be a different relationship with friends. Now all of a sudden you're working at my company. And now you know what? I don't want you seeing my Facebook. Okay. How do I undo what I've done? Well, so essentially the zap does not directly enter the social media realm. Once you zap, it's out of our control. So if you and I zap and we want to zap on Facebook and Instagram, all that zap would do would send that request directly to your Facebook and send that follow request directly to your Instagram. So you could just easily go into the um, Instagram or Facebook platform. So is there an API though for coordinating with them? I mean, are, and do you have to do that on a, a multiple scales or is it one that you've just created that does in all cases that allows for that integration? I mean, you've got to be passing username and information back and forth. I mean, how do you get that buy-in from the other from the other companies or is that needed? Um, I think that has to go with like the construction of the app. When we did talk mm -hmm. to uh, a developer, they did say that there have to be um, a mainframe built behind it, sort of a bridge. Um, in the technological sense to create that uh, uh, transfer of username. So you're right, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. What do you think, investors? You want to pursue this? Um, I mean, my, la my last, I mean, maybe a comment on, on valuation. Um, your valuation is obviously higher than everybody else that came up here today. Why? We think the cost that it's going to really take to build this app is going to be a lot as we did get a quote for from Cometa Works of a substantial amount. So I think that our valuation is pretty high as there's a lot of things that going into making this business successful as we are pitching a tough model the, that it's our revenues are based off user growth and to get these users our marketing expenses and prop development expenses will be quite high. So to answer your question we are tailoring to a huge market which is why I think our valuation is higher than the rest of people who presented today. Your valuation is higher or your ask, ask is higher? Both. I'm just trying to think of well, understand the, yeah, I guess both. How would you value your company today based, I mean, based on what did you think your company was worth a few million dollars? Um, we did actually make a DCF model to try and figure out what ah. we would be worth today. And the number came around to, um, I think, three point something million. I don't have the. On zero revenues today. Yeah, I mean we yeah. <laughs> based on users in 2017. We, we yeah, I, I, you know personally, my 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 view is a couple of things. One, I think it's pretty rich valuation. There's a lot of assumptions in it. Clearly, you can get the valuation if you believe you can execute on and get 90 million users in the next four years. I, I'm I'm not sure if you looked at any of the projections of how long it took LinkedIn to get 90 million users. Um, uh, or some of the other social platforms. I know they do, they are pretty viral after a while and can take off quite exponentially. Um, but for me, this is outside my comfort zone in, in seeing the real value. I know there's been others that have tried and attempted this uh, and have been unsuccessful, including I think Google. I think Google tried this and was yeah. unsuccessful. And so oftentimes I'll use a screening criteria for me if Google's tried it and failed. It doesn't mean it won't necessarily work, but it's a good indication that that uh, you got to really bring something unique and different here. Uh, and, and again, for me, you know, a QR code to do this, uh, I'm not sure there's that unique and different uh, for me personally. So I, I, I would agree. I think for, for that reason, I, I think 
I think I'd be out because I just don't see how you're going to get to the, the volume that you need to get to, especially in three years. All right. Do we have any other, any interest by the investors? All right. Well, Zap, nothing here today, but this is only six people. There could be some others who are beyond these six people. To one of the other comments, I, I'm, I'm, I'm outside the, I, I, it's outside my wheelhouse. It's, you may, you may be dead on correct about what you're doing. It's just something that, I have an email and a phone number. That's it. I mean, my kids make fun of me all the time. It's, that's all I have. That's all I need. Um, so to me, I, I don't see it. So it's not, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I don't want you guys walking away being disheartened. It just didn't connect with me. Should an entrepreneur take no for an answer? Never. No. no. <laughs> the, guy right. the guy earlier said he's making 100 phone calls a day. I love that. That's 200 calls a day is what you need to be doing. <laughs> yeah, Michael, did you want to? Uh, I mean, I, it isn't in my wheelhouse. I, I do belong to maybe five or six uh, social media platforms, but I don't have time to, to go to all of them. So I feel the biggest issue is the aging out, right? So when you age out, and you do have a solution for it, but it's way too early for me to even um, offer anything. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. And now it's heading off to the lobby. All right, and uh, let's find out from you on text to vote. This is our our final one of these, and we'll do the audience favorite. How many social media accounts do you have? A zero, B one to two, C three to four, and D five plus. So, how many social media accounts do you have? Zero, one to two, three to four, or five plus? Oh, I can't keep track of mine. There's so many that. I just don't know how many there are. While they, while they make their way to the lobby, I'd like to thank our bronze sponsors tonight. Arca Specio, Bankwell, Carter, Morse, and Mathias, Fairfield County Bank Insurance Services, David Zawenda McIntosh, R. Patrick Murrow, Sita and Christopher Stevens, Way Up and Wells Fargo Advisors, the Hofstetter Baring Group. All right. We have our final interview, I believe. Oh, let's see how the numbers are going. Wow, really? Five or more out there? So there's a lot of social media going on out there. All right, the lobby is ready. Let's go. Alex and Sarah. Hey, guys. Uh, we're here with Mario Cortarero and the Zap team. You guys, what's next for Zap? I would say we're still going to go for it and uh, see where it takes us. Uh, I think it's definitely improving our business model and I guess reaching out to, although these investors are great and brilliant in their own light, I feel that we can reach out to different investors in the space that we wish to raise capital. Yeah. So other than these investors that are present here tonight, uh, who else might you be able to reach out to that may connect with the millennial point of view for Zap uh, a little more deeply? Uh, in terms of the investing standpoint? Mm -hmm. Like where to go from here? Um, well, obviously there's numerous venture capitalist firms which do target social media startups so I'd say that could be a start and there's many private investors listed all over the web which could be an invaluable asset to us moving forward from here. Great. Mariano, what advice would you give the rest of the team to move forward with Zap and uh, keep their head up and find some more investors? Yeah, sure. And, you know, I, I really value the feedback that the investors gave. You know, I think that it's anytime you can get feedback on any sort of startup, you know, that's definitely valuable. Um, I think they brought up some good points and I think that, you know, these guys have shown that they work hard uh, they'll continue to work hard, and they've shown the resolve definitely to, you know, to go forth and really just put forth their best effort and, and grind. And you know that's what it takes. And you know things like this happen, but you know that's just that's just that's just the way of life. And you know I think these guys are going to be fine. Good job tonight, guys, and we wish you the best luck in the future. Back to you, Dean Gibson. Thank you, Thank you very much. And now this is your time as the audience. There's a thousand dollars on the line for the team that wins the audience favorite award. So text to vote, which was your favorite startup team? Which was your favorite startup team? A, draft sales, and these are in order of the program. B, Favorwire. C, Thrivio. D, ReadyMed or Metaspense. And E, Zap. All right, draft sales, favor wire, Thrivio, Redimed, or Zap. 
All right, now we are going to be waiting in eager anticipation for, uh, for that final vote. Are we ready? We are going to display the final $1,000 award to the audience crowd favorite. Are we ready to display that? Let's do it. I, I don't remember what order. Oh, it looks like Zap actually was the, the audience favorite. Wow, diss the judges, apparently. All right. Thrivio came in second with 25%, 39% for Zap. All right. Uh, the <laughs> and the best idea is to bring friends with you when you're in the audience. Did you connect with them by social media and say, vote for me? You did, didn't you? I think that's exactly, exactly what happened. All right, that is the end of the showcase for this year. I want a round of applause for our investors. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining.